First of all, I want to thank you guys for for all that you do. Um, there are some places around the country that you know probably the relationship with the media is is not a positive, and, and it's definitely not as as good as as good as it is here. And uh, and we we really appreciate you. We appreciate uh, you for what you know for what you do. I want to advise you that this message will kind of sound like a broken record, but actually I know there's only one person in this room that knows what a record player look record player looks like, and I'm not gonna call any names, but uh, his initials is there Wyatt Thompson. Um, <laughs> but actually. Uh, yeah, maybe a couple of uh, a few, uh, maybe a few of you other guys do as well. So I'm gonna use young people's terms, and I'm gonna say this message will kind of sound more like a corrupted file, right? Because that's kind of what you guys are used to. Um, every year, you know, there's a ton of excitement for the season, uh, especially this program, and and you know, with the expectations. But uh, I think it's important that we note that there's a whole lot of people in our program behind the scenes that uh, they, they make it go. They really make it go. As coaches, yeah, we, we are on the field and we're yelling and screaming from practice to the games. But there are people on our staff, people like Riley Galpin, who, who does a great job in recruiting, like Matt Greenwall, who works in athletic training, uh, Bill Banks, of course, in academics over the years. Our guys, our guys have performed exceptionally well in the classroom. Uh, Ellie Yuska in nutrition and Isaac Lopez in the in the weight room with our strength staff. They do a great job. And yeah, the people who run those departments, they also get a lot of glory. But, you know, at 5.30 in the morning, these people are behind the scenes making, making this program go. And so I, I think it's important that we always acknowledge the work that they do. Um, here, this fall camp, I really personally have tried to pay close attention to what's going on in the other parts, on the other parts of the team, you know, because I know as I try to learn from Coach Kleiman in this role, just having a, a more holistic view of our team, of course I know what's going on with the cornerbacks. Of course I know what's going on in the secondary. Of course I know what's going on from a defensive standpoint. But this, this fall camp, I've really tried to make an effort to uh, really see the, see the team from a different vision and you know when I think about the offense uh, I don't I don't necessarily believe in monsters right but but when I if you saw a man walking down the street with like eight arms or if you saw or saw a guy with like 10 heads right I would classify him as a monster and that's when I watch our offense that's kind of what I see you know what I mean I see I see a lot of weapons and I see our offensive staff using them very effectively I don't like watching it versus our defense, but I, but I think I'm going to just like you be be really excited about what we see uh, in the season from our offense as a whole, especially from the skilled players. But the offensive linemen, as I've kind of checked them out, uh, and and I have relationships with some of these guys. I try to hang around the offensive linemen as a cornerback coach more than any other offensive player. And the guys that I've uh, honestly on the football field watched. And, and seeing them do some really good things are some common names, but Andrew Liongang, uh, Hadley Panzer, Carver Willis, and Taylor Portier, those guys, uh, again, they're they the guys, they're the mainstays in that offensive line. But this fall camp, I've really been impressed with what I've seen from them. In the tight end room from Will Swanson, I've been impressed with him. Garrett Oakley, uh, I think, uh, is going to do some big things up for us in the tight end room. Uh, as well, both of those guys this season. The wide receivers who every day, you know, I, I get an opportunity to experience the uh, trash talking that they can give. And uh, uh, but but from a from an athletic standpoint, from a performance standpoint, it's really been exciting to watch Keegan Johnson operate in a healthy mode. And uh, and I, I just been really impressed with what he's done. I've been impressed with Trey Spivey and his his size and his ability to be able to stretch the field. Dante Sivas, a new guy on our team, I've been impressed with what he's done. Andre Davis, a younger guy who is a a, a massive player 
Uh, I've been impressed with, with his development and watching him be able to go out and, and perform. And then Sterling Lockett, who, of course, we know the name, but Sterling is continuing to emerge, continuing to develop in that room. Uh, at the running back position, I don't have to say his whole name. You just say DJ, right? And I, I've impressed with his leadership, impressed with uh, his abilities that he's shown, you know, when he's been on the field. And that's all I'm going to say about him. Joe Jackson, uh, been impressed with, with what he's done this fall camp, not only at running back, but what he's done as a special teams player. He's uh, really developed, really improved over being a, just a little young kid running around. And so uh, been impressed with him. And then, and then Dylan Edwards, um, that's it. Um, I mean, the guy, the guy can fly, and he's, he's done it over and over again. Uh, so, I'm, I mean, I'm excited about how our offense is going to be able to use him. Avery, again, he's another guy that you just pause and you don't have to say anything. You just watch the film. Uh, been impressed with uh, Avery, of course, with what he does on the field, but been impressed with how he has taken ownership of the team and how uh, uh, through, through the winter conditioning, through the summertime, uh, especially in the fall camp, how he's done a great job of being the leader of our whole team and not just the offense. Been impressed as well with Taekwon Robeson, a, a new guy on our team. When you switch to the defense, um, Brendan Mott, uh, Jordan Allen, Toby Osunsami, and uh, Damian Alalio, those guys have been really impressive, at times even dominant on the offensive line. Austin Moore, a mainstay, and I know – Every coach and every player who would come in here and talk about our team and the effective leadership uh, that we have, they would mention Austin Moore's name, and, and I, I want to uh, make sure I do the same. Asa Newsom, I've been impressed with how he's performed. Uh, Dez Purnell, kind of like Austin, a guy who's been around and played quite a bit of football for us, but he's been consistent this fall, and that's been really cl cool to see. I've been impressed with a few emerging guys in the safety room. Of course, we have those names, but guys like Wesley Fair, Jack Fabris, and Kobe McAllister, those guys, in my eyes, have just really started to show themselves uh, in fall camp, and it's been impressive. Uh, as well, in the cornerback room, Justice James, Donovan McIntosh, Jordan Dunbar, Kanijo Thomas, I put quite a bit of pressure on those guys in fall camp to, to step up to the plate, to, to find roles within that position group and on this team. And I've been, in, I've been impressed, I've been pleased with what they've done. Uh, we have a, uh, a, uh, a tenant that we go by in the cornerback room. Uh, we call it the four L's. We, Love one another, we lower the boom, we're lightning quick, and we're long and lean. Now, everybody can't say the long and lean, but I think those other things at different points, those other tenants at different points, I've just been impressed in fall camp with what those guys have been able to show in those ways. And then, uh, as a specialist, Chris Tennant, uh, man, I, I remember watching that kid walking here as a, a very young player, and, and now I just see him operate with an incredible amount of confidence. And um, um, as far as our team and where we are and how we've, how we've developed here in this fall camp, I, I, I couldn't be more impressed with where we are from an accountability, from a leadership standpoint of young guys um, being directed by players on our team, by the leaders, by the older players on our team. We have a leadership council where we have a few guys uh, that we select as leaders, but the leadership that I'm seeing is not just those guys on the leadership council, not just those names of guys you would call captains of our team, but it's leadership all over the place. And that, for, for, for what Coach Kleiman, for what Coach Kleiman as a head coach has said, this is their team, and, and they're really exhibiting that, uh, not only in fall camp, but they've done it throughout the summer. With that, I'll open up questions. Yeah, you have a lot of the answers there already. That's what I do. That's what I do to my wife, right? She <laughs> understands. I'm going to answer the question before she asks it. That way she doesn't slap me in the back of the neck, right? If you were to pick out a few factors that can make this defense go from good to great, what would they be? Well, I think the fact that we have really improved our team speed, when you talk about defense, there's, a, there's, a, there's an accelerated level of talent or we've raised the level of talent 
uh, within that group. And so what you what you have to do when you are going to try to uh, insert new players in and insert younger players in, you have to have an incredible amount of communication. And so for us all being on the same page and us executing at a high level at all points during the game, I think that'll be important for us to, like you said, go from good to great. Uh, and I think that's important for us to, for our players to understand that that's kind of where we are as a defense. When we talked to Coach Kleiman, most, the biggest praise he probably had was for your starting corners, Jacob Parrish and Keenan Garber. What's been the difference for them from last year to this year that's kind of made them ascend rapidly? Well, I think, I think experience, experience is, is always the greatest teacher. And the fact is that these guys, since they've been here, both of, well, I won't say since they've been here, but once they started to emerge and be players on our, on our defensive unit, they've, they've been the hardest workers. And, um, and, and the thing I've always had to say about Jacob or the thing I've always said about Jacob as I've come into this room is that we just need him to be more of a leader. We just need him to take over the room. Well, he's, he's exhibiting that. He's doing that. And not only him, but Keenan as well. And so I couldn't be, as a coach, more excited about where these guys can go with, with their uh, ability to be able to lead, uh, with their understanding of the defense and their commitment to executing at a high level. Uh, those, that's what you want when you have veteran players in, in that room. I've just really been blessed. Uh, with, with those two guys. So it is giving me an opportunity in fall camp to, to give other guys opportunities to see what they can do. I know what Jacob Parrish can do. So for me to see Zayshon Rich, for me to see Kanijah Thomas, to see Justice James, I've got an opportunity to do that, which is just developing those guys. Uh, one more question about your starting corners. Um, Chris Kleiman had mentioned that he was really impressed with the weight they put on, that they were able to do without losing speed. Are they able to play any differently now that they do weigh a little bit more? Well, I think it's important that, uh, you know, for that position, sometimes in that position, we say, I'm a cover corner. And, and all we do is run around and we're not involved in contact. But with the schemes that we use, they're, they're, they're going to be involved heavily in the contract under contact portion of the game. They're going to have to tackle. They're going to be in positions where they're going to have to take on bigger blockers, right? And so when when we are in a position for the guys like that to gain weight, to be able to put on weight, not as much as their coaches put on, but uh, it, it puts us in a better position to be able to do our jobs more effectively. And have you guys decided how you're going to handle headset communication on the defensive side yet? We're just going to yell really loud and let – we're not even going to use those things. I'm joking. Um, yes, we, we've worked through it. Uh, you know, the, 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 the way the rules will work, well, I believe we're still kind of stepping through that. But uh, we've used a headset, the, the headset communication with the players. We've used it uh, so far this fall. And, and honestly, the, the, the tempo that we face from a defensive standpoint in the Big 12 – it's not something that we're gonna that we understand. Our players understand that we're gonna be able to use all times, right? And so we're gonna utilize it in situations where we can. When the offense is is more deliberate, coming out of their huddles, then we are able to use it. And we we've practiced that, and our players have mostly practiced not having ability to be able to use it because honestly, that's that's what we'll face more than not is is offenses moving at a different pace. Coach, I've been playing a lot of the College Football 25 video game. I'm having a tough time stopping the pass. Do you have any advice for me on what to look for, when to press, when to cushion? Okay, so uh, what's your gamer tag name, <laughs> right? We can we can set up a game, right? And I can we can we can hit on Zoom and I can take you through it. Uh, I had to do Keenan Garber this way a few days ago because he challenged. Me, he would think that I would not know how to play the game. Uh, but actually, EA Sports, they call me when they put the game together. Um, to sh I'm, I'm just joking there for sure. Um, we'll talk. We'll talk after because I, I do have some things that I, that I can do to help your game out, right? Do you wear wristbands as you play? No, but should I start? You should, right? You should. We'll talk. We'll talk after. Uh, well, I wanted to touch one more on Keenan Garber. Uh, obviously, played a little D 
defensive back before, you know, moving to wide receiver, and then Big 12 championship game moves back, and boy, what a study's been. Was it that Big 12 championship game? Was it later down the road in a game or a moment in practice when you knew that, yeah, he's now got to be the guy to move into that starting spot? Well, I, you know, uh, Keenan has – he has really good lateral movement ability. He has really good speed. He's very competitive, right? And so I saw that before the Big 12 game, and that actually is what, what, uh, what gave me the confidence – I can say confidence now that that game is over, uh, which that gave me the confidence to throw a guy who we didn't even have a jersey number for to throw a number 35 in there, and he, he knew none of the calls, and he just played man to man. I was confident now. On that day, I was quite nervous. Um, but it was before then that I saw the ability that, that he had, you know, and it's a matter of, at that point, it was just a matter of him understanding our scheme, understanding the techniques, and the the places to use those techniques, which he had he had none of, but he had some some skills that uh, you can't coach, and that's what you know he's continued to exhibit. And I like we talk about gaining weight. That would have been one of the things that I would have, or that I've really been pushing and stressing with him, and to see him uh, really commit to putting weight on, putting on the right kind of weight, has, has been uh, cool to see. And I, I, I'm very excited to see the results of, of that commitment by him. You talked about Austin and, and Dez, obviously, but linebacker depth was a little bit of a concern, especially with all the injuries last year. How has that come along, and especially at the middle linebacker spot? Yeah, and I could, I could mention some other names. I could mention Terry Kirksey, who's done a really good job. Um, I said Asa. Uh, um, Cam Salas, those guys uh, throughout the throughout the course of camp, I think that uh, it's like we talked about with Keenan, where we where we're going to uh, really quickly be able to help ourselves is giving those guys experiences early in the season, uh, because that if there's a weakness with that group, it's just a, it's just the experience, you know. When you got a player like Austin, uh, both of those Austins, uh, then it it. You know, you don't you don't get a chance to guys behind them to play much, you know. And so that's where we've had an opportunity to do, just like me in fall camp, like like me in the spring, where you give some younger guys an opportunity to get reps. So you get better as you get reps, right? You get better. It doesn't always look cute in the games, but you get better because you get game speed reps and you get those mostly in the game. So I think that's going to uh, – that depth will improve as we get guys – on the field to be able to get uh, chances to play. Uh, and the middle linebacker spot is there. Do you kind of have a depth chart there? Yeah, I, I, I think I, I, I'm not going to give you that depth chart. Uh, but but a guy who has, has really performed well, like I said, is, is Terry Kirksey. I've been impressed uh, with, with what he's done at that position. I want to ask you about a safety, and then I'll get to the corners if you're OK with that. I'm OK. It, OK. It, it, you, I mean. <laughs> Appreciate the shout out to you. You're, you're the legend. I can't. How could I not be okay? I'm wondering just your thoughts about what you've seen, not only from a skill set standpoint, but from a leadership standpoint, and maybe even to a degree toughness from Jordan Riley. He just seems like a guy that's fit in like a glove. Well, I've had an opportunity to talk to a few NFL scouts about Jordan, and uh, you know they've been impressed with his physicality, and that's. That's kind of what he brings to that position, specifically the position in the secondary, the jack position that he plays. He's a physical player, and uh, he does a great job of communicating. He is an alpha, right? You, you see moments in practice when, when it's on the line, right? The, the game is on the line. Within practice, he's the one who is, who is grabbing the mic, and he's an alpha. We got some, got some other leaders, but – he always seems to kind of emerge, right? And sometimes it's not that he's trying to grab the mic, but that's just who he is. So I've been impressed with him in that way. I've been impressed with a guy who has walked in here and has been accepted, which this is what our culture is about. We accept players who are good players and who are fit for our culture, and 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 they walk in and they're like family from the from the onset, and that's kind of. He's taken that and he's run with it. And I, I couldn't be, you know, I'm always sitting here saying how excited I am, but I'm really excited about 
who who Jordan Riley is. Wanted to ask you a little bit too about how you feel at this point with the progress of Dunbar, and also just w the ability, I guess, of Zayshon. It, it just looks like he has uh, a really bright future. Yeah, he does because uh, you know when you talk about that L of long and lean, he is that right. He's a, he's a, which quite a few, and Dunbar is for that matter. Dunbar is as well. Uh, both guys who have really good size, and that's something as uh, that uh, through recruiting over the years we we've, we've tried to really focus in on uh, uh, is to be able to recruit guys, get guys in that room who have length and who can run. And both of those guys do that. They have an incredible amount of athleticism. They are both physical, and 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 I like that part of them. I you know been impressed with Jordan just like. Like I talked about the other Jordan, he's not as vocal. He's not as much of an alpha as as uh, Jordan Riley is. But he's coming here. He's a quiet, unassuming player, person, and uh, he just goes about his business. So he fits in perfectly in my room. Uh, but it's it's been um, really refreshing to have a transfer uh, like Jordan come in and and be a guy who is accepting any role that he gets. And, and, and is competing as hard as he can to maximize those roles. And I, I, I think he's going to be a really good player for us. Coach, can you discuss uh, how far Jacob Parrish has come from being a true freshman thrown into the fire to now one of the better corners in this conference? Yeah, it, it's funny. Sometimes I, I don't even know. I don't know how, how old is this guy, you know, because he's been playing so long. Uh, and again, he's he's an unassuming guy. He's n not ever uh, you, you can't pick him out in a room. Uh, but when it's time to play, when it's time to do things on the field, he always shows up. Right? He always at his position. He's always doing it the right way. At his position, he's always making plays. And so uh, the things you know, Jacob and I had conversations when he was a freshman about always working at this level, always making sure that, because he's always been a hard worker. But when a guy comes into the room as a freshman, sometimes older players try to get them to tone down a little bit. And I've always encouraged him, especially starting as a young guy, don't you ever tone down. You always work hard. You always do, because that's that's who you are. And, and when you have an opportunity to learn Jacob's background and learn how competitive it is in his household, you understand that that's who he is. He's going to be competitive. And so uh, where he's developed the most over the years has been what he does off the field, is, is, is how he leads the room, how he takes charge and, and helps players who are um, playing behind him. He, he tries to push them to uh, uh, compete the way he does. And so that's probably the biggest um, growth that I've seen. Uh, puts a lot of pressure on safeties to, you know, up at the line of scrimmage all the way to the back end of the defense. You mentioned some young guys there. Is this maybe the best depth you've seen at the safety spot uh, since you've been here? Yeah, and I would say the same thing about the, the cornerback room in terms of the depth, in terms of the guys on each of the units. We you, you, At this point, it's fall camp, and we have not solidified this is the first, right? Everybody's still competing. And so – uh, when you look up and down the what you would call the depth chart, you see a lot of guys who have ability. And some some of them have a strength that maybe another one does not have, right, back and forth. But uh, many times we turn on the film and we see young, young guys blazing to the football, right? So we see exhibitions of incredible speed. And – at all positions, especially the safety position, we hadn't had that, right? Yeah, we've had a guy or two here or there who could really run, but we're seeing across the board a lot of guys who can really run. Some of them are young and they're running the total wrong way, but they can run, you know. How interesting is it, though, you guys are in the same league, that over half the teams on your schedule are going to be teams you haven't seen before? And did you have to adjust your off season at all to account for that? Yeah, you know, they're, they're, you, you, when you're in the league and and be at a place as long as we have, you kind of kind of get yourself into, you know, into a routine. You get yourself into a mold of how it works and who you're going to see, where you're going to play them, uh, who knows. But this is who you're going to see and this is how it's going to be. 
Uh, and so it's been an adjustment. It was an adjustment for our off-season scouting. Uh, but you know what? That's what's so cool about our league. Uh, the fact that, you know, there's a, there's a variety within our, our league and there's new teams coming in. And so, listen, I know that all those teams that we're going to play, not just in our league, those, they're, they're preparing and, and they're getting their teams ready, right? And so there'll be challenges throughout the season for us, right? And again, some of them will be teams that we, that we hadn't faced, offensive coordinators that we hadn't faced, styles of offense that'll be a little bit different maybe than, than we faced. Uh, but our players, we're, we're, especially defensively, we're excited about that. And, uh, and, and we understand it's gonna be a tough season of challenges throughout. And that's why what we're doing at fall camp it's so important. And maybe I'm circling around here, but what has impressed you most about the defense? And then secondly, in what ways has this defense maybe uh, been ahead of some of the previous defenses you've been a part of? Well, you, you know, you could say that we have quite a few guys coming back, right? Especially in the secondary, guys who've, who've had experience and maybe not starting experience, but a lot of guys and then if you look at the defense as a whole, a lot of guys understand what we're doing, right? And so we've been able to – so that's one of the really positive things that I see in our defense that we might not have had, right, over the course of years. Um, and, and so we're able to continually push, right? We're not slowing down in terms of the installs. We're not slowing down in terms of the things, the pressures that we put on in terms of assignments, in terms of execution, right? And so that is a, is a, a big, uh, big powerful point for us, positive point for us. But I think it's also, uh, if we can take advantage of it, if we can capitalize on it, that'll be a thing that'll help us from a defensive standpoint play better than the defenses that we've had in the past, right? And uh, the next thing, again, like I, I kind of alluded to earlier, is that we have a, a lot of young players who can run. And, uh, and so when you have that, not just uh, from the defensive standpoint, but we also, we populate the special teams with a lot of defensive players. And so if we can have those guys be able to help us in field position games, then that'll, that'll help us uh, indirectly from a defensive standpoint. Well, I think for me, uh, you had uh, Phil Heath here, Mr. Olympia, speak to you guys. And I'm curious about the impact that you w were able to witness or maybe feel from within, given what he was able to deliver to you guys. You know, I, 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 um, I was really impressed with, with Phil. Yeah, of course, I mean, the muscles, right? I mean, but I'm not I'm t I was really impressed with who he was as a man. Right, because he stood here and he talked to our team, but then I had an opportunity to talk to him one on one, and then I, some of the players had an opportunity to talk to him one on one, and and the conversations that they talked to me about was really impressive because what he did is he he spoke real to our team, but he was vulnerable. He talked about situations where where he was not at his best, and they always our players. It's, that, that happens to them as well, right? And so for you to see a guy who is the greatest of all time or one of the greatest of all times at, at, at what he does to be able to share with you that, yeah, I messed up too, right? And uh, But here's how I fixed it. And, yeah, I had struggles too, but here's how I got myself back on track. And I think that was a strong – what I felt, that was something that I really felt and I was impressed with. Uh, by him, but I think also our players did as well. And and the fact that he was able to not only talk to us a couple times, but he was around, and uh, and many of our players had an opportunity to experience what I believe I experienced, just a, a guy who's incredibly successful at what he does, but is a is a real human. 